Many times in life, people don't get what they want and they need because they don't aim at it. It's time for you to have meaning in your life and build something amazing. We're all going to die someday. And if you're going to pick some place to die, then why not Mars? Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. <laughs> I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Many times in life, people don't get what they want and they need because they don't aim at it. And it's a hard lesson for people to learn because they're cynical to begin with and they presume that there's no possible way of moving forward. But it's not so unreasonable to assume that you're not going to hit what you don't aim at or you're not going to hit what you aim at and don't shoot at. And I've seen time and time again that if people do put forward a vision for what they regard as worthy of pursuit, which is something you have to determine in dialogue with yourself, it's like given the difficult preconditions of existence, is there anything that you could conceive of that you would regard as sufficiently worthwhile so that you would be motivated to pursue it? it it's, a, it's, a, it's a profound philosophical question, and it's not an unreasonable one. It's, it's a good place to start. It's like, well, life is difficult and enough to make you cynical and bitter, and perhaps enough to make you cynical and bitter and suicidal and homicidal and even genocidal. And it's not surprising in some sense. And then the question is, well, is there something that you can pursue that allows that to be acceptable or perhaps even desirable, which is something to do that justifies the suffering? And it's hard to say what that would be for each of you. It's something that you can discover. This is partly why Nietzsche was wrong. Nietzsche thought that after God had died, that human beings would have to invent their own values. But the psychoanalysts, I would say Jung foremost among them, put forward a very powerful counterclaim, which was that, well, you can't invent values. They're already built into you. You have to discover them. And I think that's true for each person. It's like, well, what would justify you in, in the abandonment of your resentment and hostility? What would be a sufficiently adventurous goal? I think people struggle with goals because they struggle with self-awareness, because they don't know who they are. And so they're constantly adjusting the goals that they have for themselves based off what other people think of them and based off what they see out in the media or on Instagram or on YouTube. They don't have self-awareness. And so you set incorrect goals. And so here's a three-step process I call the higher purpose plan that I think if you go through will dramatically change your life. It did for me, it did for many others, and it's time for you. It's time for you to have meaning in your life and build something amazing. So let's go. Step one is your who. You got to figure out what your one word is, what your most important core value is. Who are you as a human being? I wrote a whole book on this, but just as a quick brainstorm opportunity for you right now, think about what is your single most important core value? What is it? If you have to pick one core value as a human being, what is it? For me, it's belief. I like believing in people. I need to believe in people. I, I hate negativity. I hate toxic people. I hate the haters, right? I don't want to be around people saying that you can't do this i am the opposite i need to believe and so already right there already having that awareness of what your one word is what your who is when you figure that out it allows you to make better decisions it means that if you were in a work environment if i was in a work environment where people didn't believe in each other i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to handle it i would be frustrated be upset i'd be angry and now i know why because my one word is believe and so what is your single most important core value figure that out it's one of the most important exercises you can ever do in your life it's super helpful it's valuable it's important you need to do it otherwise you will never have clarity over your goals. Step number two is your why. Why do you do what you do? Your purpose comes from your pain. Your purpose comes from your pain. The thing that you will enjoy the most in life is helping people who currently are going through whatever you massively struggled with. Think about the biggest pain in your life, whatever that was growing up, the biggest pain, the thing you'd never want to have to repeat or go through again, that pain, that pain, that deep dark pain you wouldn't wish upon your enemies, that pain, the worst day of your life, that pain. Your greatest joy in life will be helping people who are currently going through that pain and getting them through it. That's it. That's your purpose for life. That will never get old. That will be with you for life. And so for me, starting up as an entrepreneur was my biggest pain. 
I, I felt worthless. I was making $300 a month. I was suffering and struggling and just felt defeated as a human being. That's why I love helping out other entrepreneurs. And that's going to be it for life. That'll be my purpose for life. And so I know my who, I know my, my one word, most important core value. I know my why, my purpose comes from my pain. That is for life. Guys, just figuring out those two steps will give you so much more clarity over 99% of the world. It's worth it. It's a little bit of process to go through, but I guarantee you it's worth it. It'll dramatically shift how you see the world and what you do with your life. Step three is then the how. So it's the who, why, how. How is then your passion. It's figuring out what it is that you're actually gonna do. So I could believe in entrepreneurs all I want, but what am I gonna do to do it? You have to enjoy the process. If you look at the most successful people in the world, they enjoy the process of the work. It's not just the end result. It's not just for me about hitting 10 million subscribers. It's the process. Process. I like making videos, right? I like helping entrepreneurs and I do that through making videos, through speeches, through books. You have to like the process of it, otherwise you will never win. Once you figure out your who, your one word, once you figure out your pain, right? The why, purpose comes from your pain, then make a list of all the ways that you have helped people deal with those struggles. And then circle the ones that you enjoyed the process of. If a friend of mine needed to move to a new building and I, and I offered to help, and move boxes. I would be pumped for him that he's got his new office set up. That's believing in entrepreneurs, but I don't enjoy the process of moving boxes. And so I wouldn't circle that one on my list. But if it's making videos, if it's writing books, if it's going and doing seminars and speaking from the front of a stage, if it's helping entrepreneurs one-on-one -on -one at coffee shops, all that stuff, I love it. I love it, like I could do it forever. I love it, it, it fills me, it gives me energy and fuel, and so I want that for you. And so you now make a list of all the ways that you have helped people, and then circle the ones that you enjoyed, not not just the end result but the actual process and then figuring that stuff out you're set you're set you're now a special human being and i think it's within all of us to be able to do it we just don't have the awareness that it's something that we need to go and chase down and so figure that out get the self-awareness understand what your who is understand what your why is understand what your how is and your life gets dramatically better now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're going to enjoy, but before that question of the day, I want to know what is your how? What is the process that you enjoy the most in serving other people? Let me know. Put in the comments below. Once you said you want to die on Mars, why? I, I don't, to be clear, I don't want to die on Mars. <laughs> I mean, we're all going to die someday. And if you're going to pick some place to die, then why not Mars? Okay. You know, if, if we're born on Earth, why not die on Mars? Seems like maybe it'd be, be, be kind of exciting. But uh, so I, I, I think given the choice of dying on Earth or dying on Mars, I'd say, yeah, sure, I'll die on Mars. Um, but it's not some kind of Mars death wish. Um, <laughs> and, and, and if I do die on Mars, I just don't want it to be on impact. Okay. <laughs> so I've been living my life recently under one compelling standard, and simply this, be only with people do only the work and be only in the spaces and places that fuel my joy. I think life is too short to be depleted. And so I've spent a lot of my life helping people rise to iconic as producers and performers and creatives and entrepreneurs and leaders. And so what I wanted to do in this mastery session is really share with you some of the things I do in my own life to fuel my joy, fuel my energy, fuel my creativity. And what I'm really speaking of here is adventure. So if you talk to any good neurobiologist, they will tell you that the brain craves novelty. The way we are hardwired is to pursue joy, to pursue novelty, to pursue newness. And that's why so often we start something but we really don't finish it. We're always looking for that one new thing that will fuel our joy, fuel our ideation, fuel our creativity. It's almost like we've got this inner child within us constantly longing to see the light of day. And you know, adults are nothing more than deteriorated children. You never want to lose that connection with that festive, fiery, sparkling, creative, playful inner child. I mean, you know, the more you can connect with that inner child, the more you're going to find your productivity growing exponentially, your creativity firing up, and basically you just going out into your industry and out into the world and radiating positivity. 
So what are some of the things that I do to fuel my joy and to keep that sense of adventure alive so I don't lose the sparkle in my eye? Traveling. I just love being on airplanes. Fundamentally, I am a nomad. So I love being in Rome and eating the pasta and experiencing the fresh mozzarella di bufala or di burrata, watching the way the light falls over the architecture. I just love Rome so much. I love getting up in the morning while the Romans are asleep and running up to Monte and then past the Colosseum and then past Trevi Fountain. I mean, that is one of the greatest runs, I think, on the planet, at least for me. I love going to Mauritius. Why do I love Mauritius? It's this island paradise where no one can find me and I can immerse myself in creativity and I can refuel. You talk about adventure, going to Mauritius and swimming with the dolphins is one of the things you need to do on your before I die list before you die. I just love places like Stockholm. I love Latin America. I love the Middle East. I adore Europe. I love London. I love Switzerland because I love to ski. I love going to India. I love going to Southeast Asia. I love traveling the planet because here's the thing. I don't think there is a better education known to humankind than traveling. Also, if you want to build confidence like Jordan Peterson and others, check out my free 254 series. The link is in the description below. If you're going to speak effectively, you have to know way more than you're talking about. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.